a 0.25 kilogram ball attached to a 1.5 meter rope moves at a constant speed of 15 meters per second around a vertical circle. Calculate the tension force on the rope at the bottom, I mean at the top, bottom, and at the middle of the circle. Now let's distinguish horizontal circular motion from vertical circular motion. So here's horizontal circular motion. And the tension force is approximately equal to the centripetal force. It's mv squared over r. And this is especially true if the ball is moving fast enough. If it's not, it's going to be at an angle. And the circle is going to be nearly horizontal. Let me draw a better circle than that. If it's not moving fast enough, you need to incorporate the fact that we have ty and tx. And this is t. And you have the weight force, mg. So to calculate the tension force, it's going to be the square root of tx squared plus ty squared. And tx provides the centripetal force. That's the horizontal part. So tx is mv squared over r. Ty supports the weight of the ball. So Ty is going to be mg. If the ball is moving fast enough, Ty is going to be relatively small to Tx. So you can approximate T just using this equation. If it's not moving fast enough, if it's moving slow, then you have to use this to calculate the tension force. Now that's for a horizontal circle. But what about a vertical circle? How can we calculate the tension force at point A, B, and C? Now here's a question for you. Let's say if you have a rope and a ball attached to it. And imagine swinging it in a vertical circle. Will it feel heaviest at point A, B, or C? If you notice, the ball will feel heavier at point C. Because not only do you need to support the weight of the ball, but you have to lift it up to get to it, uh, to get to point B, if you're moving in this direction. It turns out that the tension force at point C is the sum of the weight force and the centripetal force. At point A is the difference of the centripetal force and the weight force. At point B, if it's moving fast enough, the tension force is approximately equal to the centripetal force. If it's not moving fast enough, let's see if I can put it here. This is also the same as point D as well, and point B. If it's not moving fast enough, it's going to be the square root of mv squared over r squared, that's tx squared, plus mg squared, which is ty squared. So that's how you can find the exact tension force at points B and D. But for the most part, if it's moving fast enough, you can approximate it to uh, mv squared over r this will become insignificant. Now let's talk about how to derive those equations before we actually work out this problem. So at the top of the circle, we have a downward tension force and also a downward weight force. So the sum of all the forces in the y direction is going to be negative t, because t is going in the negative y direction, and negative mg. Now based on Newton's second law, the net force is equal to ma. Now the net force is also in the negative y direction, so I'm going to put negative ma. And the acceleration that points towards the center of the circle, that is the centripetal acceleration. So and the centripetal acceleration is v squared 
over r. So therefore, what we have here is the centripetal force. And that's equal to negative t minus mg. Now, our goal is to calculate the tension force at the top. So I'm going to take this term, move it to the left side to make it positive, and then take this term, move it to the right side to make that positive. So on the left, I'm going to have positive t is equal to positive mv squared over r on the right, minus mg. So the tension force at the top at point A is the difference between the centripetal force mv squared over r and the weight force mg. So now let's go ahead and calculate it. So it's going to be 0.25 times 15 squared divided by 1.5 minus 0.25 times 9.8. So the tension force at the top is about 35 newtons. So now let's calculate it at the bottom. So at the bottom of the circle, we have an upward tension force, and we have a downward weight force. So the net force in the y direction is equal to the upward tension force. It's positive because it's pointing in a positive y direction. Mg is negative because it still points in a negative y direction. Now, the centripetal acceleration is upward which means that the net force is also upward. So we're going to replace this with positive ma. And so that's going to be t minus mg. And a is v squared over r. So I'm going to take this term and move it to this side. So I'm going to have mv squared over r plus mg. And that's equal to the tension force. So at the bottom of the circle, the tension force is the sum of the centripetal force and the weight force. So this is going to be 0.25 times 15 squared divided by the radius of 1.5 plus 0.25 times 9.8. And so this is going to be 39.95 newtons. So that's the tension force at the bottom. It's greater than what it is on top. Now let's calculate the tension force at the middle of the circle. So what you need to know is that the middle of the circle, if it's moving fast enough, the tension force is approximately equal to the centripetal force. So it's going to be about 0.25 times 15 meters per second squared divided by the radius of 1.5. And so that's about 37.5 newtons at the center. So that's an approximation. But if it's not moving fast enough, the answer will vary a little. So at the center, the rope is not going to be exactly horizontal. It's going to be at a slight angle. And so that's the tension force. This is Tx, and this is Ty. Now usually, Ty is going to be a lot smaller than Tx at the center of the circle. And here's mg. So to get the tension force, as we said before, it's going to be tx squared plus ty squared. And we know tx is equal to the centripetal force, mv squared over r. And ty 
is equal to the weight force. So that's going to be mg and then squared. So let's plug this in. Now we already know what mv squared over r is. Based on the last answer, that was 37.5. And the weight, mg, that's 0.25 times 9.8, which is 2.45. As you can see, 2.45 is relatively small compared to 37.5. So t is going to be about this answer. So it's not going to change much, but we'll go ahead and do it for the sake of seeing it. So if you type this in your calculator, the exact tension force is 37 0.58. So it changes a little, but for the most part, it's about the same. 